you've got the pandemic going, you have many other things that you're doing in your life that you could be doing right now. And we really appreciate you being here. We're gonna make this evening useful for you. Um, there are two different uh, kinds of things we wanted to give you tonight. Um, first of all is give you uh, a sense of perspective, how the assessments fit in with the property tax system. And it's not just useful for you as a, as a citizen, but also impacts your tax bill to know how other people are assessed. So that's why we're gonna give you that information. Um, it, Alderman has been a great partner in helping us to educate you and um, people in the ward about how property taxes work, how assessments are about equity. And so we'll start with that. Um, and then we will give it to, to uh, the rest of my team to help you advocate for yourself within this system, which is very complex, but there's some really simple things you can do. So we don't want you to be feel overawed we're going to bring this, break it down for you, show you all the different things that you can do. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Um, and we'll show you some of the things that we can do tonight. So thank you for being here. What is our job as the assessor? It's to estimate the value of buildings. That's what our office does. Uh, deceptively simple, but our job is to take a snapshot of where the value of buildings are. And we do it um, in one third of the county every year. And this is the first year that our administration has taken this snapshot of building values in the city of Chicago. Um, and by law, it's supposed to, our snapshot is supposed to reflect market prices. And what you want us out of the assessor's office is to make sure that we're doing this accurately for everyone. If we start, if we estimate the value of you and your neighbor's home correctly, but there's a other part of the city where we're systematically underestimating the value of those buildings there, that will mean you and your neighbors are picking up the tab for the folks that we've underestimated. So that's why it's really important for us uh, as, your, uh, as people serving you in this part of the system to estimate the value of buildings fairly for everyone so that you're only paying your fair share and that everyone's being treated in the same way. Um, and that's why we, we say assessments are interconnected. It's not just important that your own assessment be accurate and your neighbor's assessment be accurate, but that everyone's assessment be accurate because it impacts your bill, your share of the total amount of taxes that have to be paid in Chicago. A, a similar concept is that a change in your assessment does not mean uh, the same change in your taxes. Actually, not even close. You could have an increase in your assessment and your bill could go down. And that's actually something that's very likely to happen for most homeowners in Chicago this year. We'll explain why. The reason why uh, at, a, at a really high level is that um, it's your share of total assessed value that determines your property tax bill. Um, and if your assessment goes up, but the total assessed value of Chicago goes more, goes up more, your share of the total amount of taxes that have to be paid could go down even though your assessment goes up. And we'll show you this later. Here over on the right, we're, it's a map of the average house values that we see for single family properties in Lakeview Township. So that's a huge swath of many different neighborhoods. 46th Ward is uh, up a little bit north here. Um, you can see the different price ranges. Um, there's a, a very, you know, even at the average level, quite a diversity of, of values of single family homes. But these are just averages. We know each home, even in these, you know, on a block is very different. And so we try to see these differences in our assessments. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Here is a closer look at that map. Um, and again, these are averages. These are what we see in terms of our estimated values um, in uh, different parts of Lakeview Township based on transactions that have taken place in the last few years. We look at every transaction that happened, and then we look at the attributes of each home that sells, and we try to use that, which is maybe 15% of the homes might have sold in the last few years. We try to use that information to value the other 85% that didn't sell. We try our best. We are about 230 people trying to value two million, close to 2 million properties. So this is a, pr a pretty difficult task, you definitely know more about your house than us, and we'll get into when we, we're off the mark, how we can correct that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Here you can see what we have 
observed in terms of single family home transactions in Lakeview Township um, in, in, 20, in the last few years. You can see that it's actually home values have been pretty steady. Uh, the top end of that green area is sort of the top third. Um, and then the bottom area is sort of at the bottom or the bottom third would start. So there's a pretty big range here. Um, you can see that it's a 720 to 1. 1 million for the middle third is that range. And then you can see what it is for condos, 240,000 to 410,000. There are a lot of condos in the, in the 46th ward. So we'll talk more about those uh, as well. And you can see where our, our estimates have landed. We estimate 700,000 to 1 million for that middle third for single family homes and 150 to 300,000 for that middle third for condos. But again, these are averages and it depends from neighborhood to neighborhood as you can see on that map. Okay, let's go to the next map. And the I'll key just, question is yeah. for you is when we sent you your assessment, is that what you think your house is worth? And um, if, you, if you think we're off the mark, then that's something where uh, you, you, would have a, you would want to investigate making an appeal. Now, our assessments, here you can see, how are we doing in terms of the data that we have on the accuracy of our assessments? A lot of people are asking about this. Um, in the past, there was a tendency for assessments to be regressive. So that would mean that the more highly valued your home was, the more likely we were to underassess it. The more modestly valued your home was, the more likely we were to overassess it. We have made great progress. Um, in this area and pretty much every area that we've reassessed, we see this indicated here on the right-hand side where uh, the bottom third, uh, middle third and top third are closer to 1.1. There's less of a tendency for bias and that's good. We are always trying to make this better. There's always a little bit of in missing information for homes at the bottom end. We don't know if there have been no renovations, what the interior conditions are like, and that can sometimes cause us to overestimate the value of homes. Anyone out there who has a really old home that hasn't been renovated in a long time, they might really want to look into an appeal to see if we got the value of their home right, because we don't have those uh, condition information that can detract from the value of your house. And sometimes that can lead us to overestimate it. But we're making really good progress in all the tests that we have in terms of making sure that all homes across the price spectrum are being estimated more accurately and without bias. Okay, we can go to the next slide. And I'll just say for the audience uh, already, this has all already been a lot of information, uh, but if you have questions, feel free to, to drop yep. them in the Q&A. And, and we, uh, are, we're gonna, we're we are gonna, gonna get to, get to your questions. appeal real soon here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this is some of that context that I mentioned is information is valuable for you um, as a taxpayer just to know. Um, we know that you know Lakeview Township residential assessments are up in the neighborhood of 20%. Um, but the key thing to know is that homeowner's share of the burden has been falling in just about every area that we've reassessed and Lakeview Township is no different. Homeowner's share of the burden falling from 76% in 2018 to 71% so far in our reassessment. That's because some of the bigger commercial properties tended to be undervalued by the previous administration. We've closed that valuation gap, reduced that disparity and it's reduced homeowners share of the burden. This is what we've seen in every part of the city so far. And that can be one of those reasons why your assessment can go up, but your bill may end up going down next year because your share of the burden is falling. We'll talk a little bit more about this on the next slide. Oh, okay. So here, if you wanna dig down even more into what's going on in your neighborhood, what are the kinds of transactions that we're seeing that led to our assessment of your home? You can look in these three areas here. So the top uh, row is single family homes. There are about 12,000 single family homes in Lakeview. Um, there were about 600 sales in 2020. You can see the price ranges for those sales and you can see the values that we've mailed, 700,000 to 1.1 million. That second row, those are two to six flats. There are about 11,000 of them. There are a lot of them. Uh, there were 304 sales. You can see the price ranges on those. Um, actually a little bit lower than the single family homes, if you look at the price ranges. 
And then there are a lot of condos down in the bottom row, about 60,000. And there were about 3,200 sales. You can see the price ranges that we saw in 2020, 240 to 410,000 for that middle third. Um, and then um, you can see the, the price ranges that we estimated. But you can dig even deeper by going to cookcountyassessor.com and then go to data and valuation reports. And you can go down and look in your neighborhood to see the transactions that we looked at and the ranges that we estimated. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to give people, because I know we have some uh, folks from the business community um, here on the call with us here tonight. Here's what we saw in terms of commercial assessments in Lakeview Township uh, for a large apartment building, so seven units and above. You can see there's quite a wide range of rent, about 900 to 4,300 per month. Uh, vacancy rates are pretty low, around 5%. And then you can see all the other drivers that we use for estimating value. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a, quite a diversity of building stock in Lakeview Township. So you can go to our website to get more information about the kinds of estimates that we have for your kind of property. But you can see um, with office and industrial and retail, some of the assumptions that we made, for example, retail space renting for 20 to $30 a square foot, vacancy rates as high as 15%. Um, you can see the expense ratios that we assumed in, in these properties where we know it's a little bit more expensive to operate these days. Um, and you can see some of the other drivers that we assumed in, calculating these. Again, these are all available on cookcountyassessor.com. Just wanted to note, <clears throat> we've changed our vacancy policy, listening to uh, people in your community and other communities all over the city on the north side, but also south side and west side. Uh, it used to be that um, <clears throat> a lot of the policies that our office had in place tended to maybe inadvertently encourage vacancy. If a property was left vacant, you could get your assessment reduced by up to 90%. Um, and that was resulting in people deciding to keep spaces empty while hoping to gain an appreciation in the value of the land out of them, but in the meantime, hurting vitality on business corridors, hurting the businesses that are staying open, hurting this collection of sales taxes and causing the city to become more reliant on property tax than it should, and of course, hurting local employment. So we have put in place a new policy that really represents better representation of what goes on the market when a property is vacant. Um, we, were, we are now giving credit to every commercial property on a corridor for the local vacancy rate, whether the business is open or not. That's a good practice. Um, and then if a, a business claims additional uh, vacancy, it gets temporary partial credit for the amount of additional vacancy that it has. And we're starting to see encouraging signs that this is encouraging more occupancy. It also happens to be a better representation of what goes on the market um, <coughs> when you, excuse me, when you keep your property uh, vacant. Um, so you can learn more about, about our vacancy policy again by going to our website. Okay, we're gonna get some information to you now on how you can appeal. I know a lot of you um, are, I, oh, here's, sorry, um, I, I went too quickly. If yeah, you are a little more commercial owner, uh, data into here, Fritz, uh, incentives, and uh, then something on RPI real quick. Ah, okay. So just a couple more things here. If we go back to the previous slide, okay. um, if you're a commercial business owner, um, ah, okay. So we can go to the next slide. Sorry, I jumped around there. Um, there are incentives that we, that we administer um, for, uh, there's class 6Bs, 7As, and Bs and Cs. These, are, these help to incentivize investment in commercial property, both retail and industrial. Um, you, you apply for these incentives by working with the city's planning and development department. Um, and then the city, uh, if, they, if they approve your proposal, um, then we implement these incentives. And it is a really important benefit that helps to encourage investment throughout the city. Um, and uh, you can read more about those on our website. Um, the key is that you know, these incentives are needed Without the incentive, the investment would not happen. But for the incentive, investment wouldn't happen. And um, that's part of the application process that happens at our office. And we know um, Alderman Kappelman and other members of city council are really important in helping uh, to make these projects happen. Go to the next slide. Uh, I wanted to thank all the members of the commercial community here who, 
who filled out this RPI form. This is a form that every commercial property owner received at the start of the year and allowed commercial properties to submit information about the, the conditions that they're experiencing before we sent out these assessments. And folks who did it are glad that they did because it's a form that saves most commercial property owners money because the data that we use when we make assessments sometimes is generalized. It comes from commercial databases. Sometimes it doesn't fully reflect the experiences and conditions that especially smaller commercial properties have. So this form went out to every commercial property owner in Chicago. A lot of you have filled it out. And when you appeal, you'll have to fill out this form anyway. And so if you haven't sent in this form yet, if it's new to you, you'll be filling this out if you're a commercial property owner. And again, it gives us more information about the condition and the, and the, um, the, the rental income and expenses and vacancy conditions that you have as a commercial property owner so we can assess it right. Okay. Oh, if we go to the previous slide. So again, kind of transition uh, here. we're gonna round up everyone. You guys have been really patient on this high level stuff, but it's important. Estimating the value of 1.9 million parcels is what we do, 1.9 billion buildings. And the value is determined by a system where we're using all those different assumptions that we just wrote about, rents and expenses and income for commercial properties. And then for homes, it's about what have they sold for? What are the characteristics of those homes? And then we use a model to estimate the value of all of them the same way that Zillow does, the same way that you probably would if you were out there shopping for a home, you'd look at recent sales for similar homes. That's what our model does too. And we're trying to make sure that we see the different conditions, the different characteristics that you see when you do this. And a lot of our modeling has been focused really on making sure that we see those differences, which are so important in the rich landscape, uh, economic and human and neighborhood landscape of our city and county. Um, and it's really important that we get this right. We don't wanna have a bias because that can cause some people to pay more than their fair share and others to underpay. So fairness and equity is really important as, our, as part of our job. It's actually it's what we do. Equity is what assessments are about. And the other thing that we do at our office is administer exemptions. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that. Okay. Um, we could go to the next slide here. Christina, do you want to take it from here? Um, sort of. Okay, now guys, the, this is the part the where we get to how you can navigate yourself within the system. I gave you sort of a high level look now here's how you can navigate for yourself, which is making sure that those how, that we estimated the value of your home correctly and that you're getting all the exemptions and how you can advocate for yourself if our assessment was off the mark and you want it corrected. Okay, take it away, guys. All right. Thank you, Professor Kiki. I'll take it from here. So again, my name is Angelina Romero. I am the Director of Communications at the Assessor's Office. And I am going to explain, sort of uh, break it down to those who are interested and want more information about how to file an appeal. Um, so first, we'll go ahead and repeat this part. So one third of the county is reassessed each year. Right now, the city of Chicago is being reassessed. And furthermore, Lakeview Township, which is what we're covering this evening, um, is being reassessed. So the property owners in Lakeview should have received what is called an assessment notice. And on that assessment notice, there's a date. So from the time you get your notice, you have 30 days to decide to determine and if you would like to file an appeal and you will have to submit this appeal. And the deadline date for property owners in Lakeview, I believe, yes, is December 23rd. So that is the deadline day to file an appeal for Lakeview Township. Next slide, please. Thank you. Here we go. So we're going to spend some time on this slide. This is very important to understand. So property owners in Chicago and specifically Lakeview Township have just received this notice here on the left. This is a reassessment notice. So property owners only get this notice every three years when they're being reassessed. So you have, really have to understand that the last time the city of Chicago was reassessed was three years ago. So that's how, how it works every three years. Um, so right now, property owners have received this assessment notice, and what you really want to look at and pay attention to is this area that's circled in red. It says estimated fair market value. 
So this is the value that we're placing on your home. This is the value set by the assessor's office. And what this number basically means and represents is that this is the amount that we believe that your house would sell for today in today's current market. So when you're filing an appeal, what you're really filing or what you're appealing is this amount here, this estimated fair market. You're telling us that you don't agree with this amount. So you really wanna pay attention here to your reassessment notice. Also, some other really important information you can find on here are all of your property characteristics. So for we have your square footage, uh, what type of building you're classified as, how old the building is, how many bedrooms, um, et cetera. So, and then there's, you can actually see your assessment history. So you can see what the last reassessment amounts were as well. So you can kind of compare that. Um, so this is really important to understand. Only properties in the city of Chicago are being reassessed this year and will receive a reassessment notice. Now to the right, this is a second installment property tax bill. This is sent from the Cook County Treasurer's Office. And there are many departments within Cook County that, are, that make up the property tax system. So the assessor's office sends out an assessment uh, notice that displays the fair market value. And then you will see this. So everyone in Chicago who just received their reassessment notice, this fair market value will reflect on your second installment property tax bill, which is mailed in the summer. The summer of 2022 is when you will see this fair market amount reflected on your bill. So this is the bill that it Im impacts basically. Um, so I know there are two different things, it's just important to understand the difference. And um, again, for those property owners in Lakeview, your deadline to file an appeal is December 23rd. So that deadline date is nearing. Next slide, Kel. Okay, so let's say you're a property owner in Lakeview and you decide that you don't agree with the value that we set on, um, on the assessment notice on your property. So you are interested in filing an appeal. So generally there's three reasons why you would file an appeal. One is lack of uniformity. So this is basically if you have a property that's a certain amount of square footage, bedroom size, bathroom, and you know your neighbor next to you and down the street, there are many of your uh, properties that are similar and you believe you haven't been assessed as they have. So you would file for a lack of uniformity. The second reason is what I've been talking about is overvaluation. So you believe that your property has been overvalued. Um, and the third is incorrect property description. So this one's pretty common as well. This is, uh, let's say we have in your reassessment notice that you have a three bedroom and you actually have a two bedroom. So this is sometimes common and, and happens, but in order to correct those property characteristics that we have for you, you need to file an appeal. So here's three different reasons. And next slide. Thank you. Uh, so just a few things to know if you decide to file an appeal, if you don't, if you'd like to fix the correct characteristics, or again, you don't believe that your home could sell for the, the value that we placed on your home, these are just a few things, reminders going into it. So as always, to file an appeal is absolutely free with our office. A lot of times homeowners will be bombarded by mail uh, with advertisements, uh, for companies to help you file. But again, it's completely free to file with our county office, with the Cook County Assessor's Office. And you can do this all online. Uh, next, send an email to file an appeal online. So please be aware of that. You will have to have your email address handy. And again, the deadline date to file for property owners in Lakeview is December 23rd. So in just a few days. Another reminder, while you can start drafting an appeal, so let's say tonight after you finish this outreach or after you finish watching this presentation, you decide that you would like to file an appeal, um, but you still wanna collect some more data. So you can actually start drafting it. You can save it, come back and modify it. Uh, but once you hit that submit button, you won't be able to make any changes to your application. 
However, you will still be able to upload some additional attachments, but only up until the deadline date, which is again, December 23rd. And last, oh, I already said that, yeah. So you have up until December 23rd after you press submit. You can't make any modifications to the application, but again, you may be able to down or upload a few more attachments. So when you start your online application, so as I stated before, a lot of homeowners uh, may believe that their properties have been overvalued. So this is a, a common reason. And in that case, homeowners can actually find comparable properties to show proof. So, you know, you're trying to prove that we overvalued your property. So you would show other properties that are um, assessed at a lesser value. So a lot of homeowners like to do their own research and look up comparable properties. You can actually find um, a tool from our website where you can use, it's called Cook County Viewer to look up comparable properties. However, we just rolled out a new tool within the online appeal system and it actually auto populates similar properties, comparable properties for you within the application and you can simply choose which ones you want to use. So I highly recommend that you use this new feature so when you start an appeal, this is sort of the opening page, and it would be the one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth, sixth option down, and it reads 2021 real estate assessed valuation appeal with comparable grid. So I know that's a, a mouthful, but um, basically you would choose the filing that says with comparable grid, and that basically means if you can use that new comparable tool um, within the application. Um, so again, this is just what I just said. Uh, and this is actually when you start filing the appeal, this is actually where you are able to search for comparable properties. So as you can see right here, you can actually be very, be very specific and sort of hone in the different attributes that you wanna include in your search while you're looking for these comparable properties. Okay, and you can set up your own criteria again here. Uh, you can put your, be very specific, neighborhood class. And even if you don't want to be this specific, you just want comparable properties um, that are similar to yours, it'll actually auto-populate. This is just if you want to get very, very specific. And then this is an example of, let's say we said, um, click the blue button, find comparables. Then again, it auto generates um, units that are similar to yours, properties that are similar. And it usually has two to three pages worth and you can actually, you can go to the next one. And then you can actually see here, you can highlight and select the comparable properties that you want to include in your application. So it makes the process just a little bit simpler for um, homeowners. So I highly recommend to use this tool. Again, you are more than welcome to do your own search. A lot of people like to, you know, of course, go on Zillow and all, and all those types of um, tools. And then you can also use our Cook County Viewer as well. And let's see here, so you don't wanna attach your comparable properties here. This area, I see right here where it says additional pins. Sometimes homeowners will upload uh, documents here that show their comparable properties, but this is actually if you had multiple pins. Some properties do have multiple pin numbers, and this is where you could file them all together in one application. And this is actually where you want to file additional attachments if you have them. Okay. So that sort of covers the appeal part. So again, homeowners have until December 23rd to file, which is in just a few days. You can do this all online. And again, we highly recommend that you decide, if you do decide to file, that you use the comparable tool um, that we have offered now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears and talk a little bit about exemptions. And what are exemptions? These are property tax savings that are offered by our office. Um, these help lower your tax bill. It's very important if, uh, to see if you qualify for any. Right now, the normal filing period is closed. However, it's going to reopen around February and it's usually open until the very, very early part of summer. So homeowners typically 
uh, most homeowners are eligible for this one, the top one that says homeowner. And basically you just have to uh, be the homeowner and the property has to be your primary residence. And so usually most homeowners are eligible for that one. So you really wanna make sure that you have that exemption. Uh, it does offer pretty significant savings. The next are geared towards seniors. We have the senior exemption, which is basically the same as the homeowner. It just adds that um, age requirement of 65. The next is the senior free. This is uh, age requirement and an income requirement. So you have to, uh, your household has to have 65,000, make 65,000 or less in one year. So these three are the most popular with homeowners. And then the next is persons with disabilities. We have returning veterans. A veteran with disabilities is a pretty popular one along amongst the veteran community. We have a longtime homeowner and home improvement. Um, those are a little bit less popular, but again, you just wanna really uh, look into the homeowner senior and senior freeze. And actually, we already have a question about the uh, the long time exemption. Oh, That's one of our most one of our most frequently asked questions yeah. uh, is about that yeah. one. So we'll we'll As continue with the presentation, uh, but we'll we'll come back to that one. So just kind of yeah, to, I can put a I can go ahead and, I can go ahead and knock that one out. I was kind of just honing in on those top three, but yes, long time homeowner exemption. Um, so I know the name's a little bit deceiving because homeowners think right away, you know, if they lived in their property a long time, they would qualify. But it's actually uh, very few qualify for it. And it's usually homeowners that qualify for it have to live in areas where they've had a significant increase in their assessed value. And this is usually in neighborhoods that have completely changed and often have been gentrified. So actually only 2% of homeowners in Cook County are eligible. And our office will send an application to those eligible properties in February. Yeah, it's it's um, it's somewhat uh, deceiving with the name. I believe also like you could you have to ne have never appealed in the past uh, for that exemption as well because that changes your your AV. So um, it's a pretty sophisticated calculation and high mm -hmm. bar uh, that's set uh, that we don't set in our office, but uh, we administer the exemptions. We don't set them, but um, you know it, it, we do get that as probably our most frequent question. Yeah, and thank you for asking. We were asked in the chat. Okay, so next. So you're on uh, listening to this presentation right now. I highly encourage uh, those viewers to go ahead and check your exemptions. And you can do this online now. You can go to, it's called the Cook County Portal website. And it is at cookcountypropertyinfo.com. So all you need to do is type in your PIN. You can find your PIN on your reassessment notice. You type in your PIN and this website has a lot of valuable information. You could look up past tax bills. Here you can download past tax bills. You can also see your exemption history. So this last year was the 2020 tax year. Next year will be the 2021 tax year. So you can see which exemptions you already had applied to your property. Some auto renew. So for example, if you're receiving the homeowner or senior exemptions, those automatically renew every year. You don't have to reapply for them. Um, however, and due to COVID right now, actually the senior freeze, persons with disabilities and veterans with disabilities will also auto renew. So you don't have to worry about that. But let's say you are a senior, you just turned 65 and now you're going to be eligible. So that's something you do want to pay attention to. There might be an exemption that you weren't before, but you are now. But nonetheless, you can check your exemption history here. Next slide. Okay. And I know I stated before that our regular filing period is closed um, and it will open soon in February. Uh, if you see, let's say you check the portal and you realize last year for the 2020 tax year, you are missing a senior freeze exemption and you're just realizing this now. Well, throughout the year, we provide an opportunity and it's basically called a certificate of error, but it's to file for missing exemptions for past tax bills. So for example, if you realize that you were eligible for the senior freeze last year, you didn't apply, you wanna correct your tax bill now, you can do that with our office. It's called again, certificate of error process. 
and homeowners right now can file for the following tax years, past tax years, 2020, 2019, 2018, and 27. So you can correct those four years worth of tax years. For example, again, if let's say you're a fairly new homeowner, have owned your home for five years, and you're now just finding out about the homeowner exemption, you can go back and file with our office. And what usually happens is we um, will process the application, you get a letter in the mail with us, uh, from us, and then you would actually get a refund check from the Cook County Treasurer's Office. So it is somewhat of a process, but it's definitely well worth it if you were entitled for those exemptions and um, you know that's, you, have, you still have an opportunity. Next. Yep, and we've already had a question about that um, in the, the Q&A, so. Oh, okay. That's really, really valuable though. That's one of the biggest ways that we help save people money. Yeah, days. exactly. And you can do this all online. So you can file uh, these applications online right now if you wanted to go back, if you realize uh, that you may be missing some exemptions. Uh, so these exemptions that we're talking about, these property tax savings, they appear on your second installment bill. So the second installment bill is um, where we sort of play a role. You will see the assessed value. So in the left-hand corner, when you get your second installment bill, this is where you'll find that assessed value that we talked about that's on your reassessment notice that you just received. And then right here where you see this red box, you will actually see your exemptions listed. So it's in, the second installment tax bill is pretty important to go ahead and pay attention, make sure everything's in order. And again, you could download past um, bills if you're just curious uh, and you want to make sure everything does look correct from past bills. You can find them all in the Cook County portal. You can download past tax bills. All right, and that's, that concludes our presentation. We'll go ahead and take questions. Um, I do encourage you to file, oh, sorry, Kellen, go back. I do encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. We send out very valuable information, reminders about when to apply for exemptions, deadlines uh, relating to our appeal calendar, and just important updates from our office. So I do encourage you to sign up to receive news and also follow us on social media for updates as well. Okay, hey. great. Well, this is the best part of the session is the question and answer. So, Elwin, do you wanna um, yeah, take questions? Yeah, absolutely, the yeah. I can, I can uh, grab some out of the, the chat. I'll, I'll just kind of start in order uh, that they came in. So, uh, Lucy, <clears throat> Lucy Davis, uh, Daly rather, um, why has the assessed value of the land doubled? Uh, can and how do residents appeal the assessed value uh, of the land? So this question came in early, kind of before our appeals presentation. So hopefully some of that was answered. Uh, I know it's impossible for us to answer like you know, specific questions about your property without your PIN number and your address and giving us some time to do a little bit of research. So um, I think it's going to be hard to, you know, to, to answer um, as far as like the, the doubling of the land. But um, you know, I can put my information in the chat. If you want to have a conversation and shoot me your pin. Yeah. Um, and I can, and I can, I can do some give a broad level answer to that. Um, so it's kind of like uh, under state law, we have to, when we provide an assessment, split up our estimate of value and estimating the value of the land and then all the improvements. Really the thing that you should focus on is what's the combined value? of the whole that we've estimated, because that's what you would be appealing. That's the thing that determines your share of the property tax burden. That's what's determining other people's assessed value. It's really both of those. The reason why the land piece has gone up is we wanna make sure that we're accurately estimating the land component in addition to the buildings, so that when there are vacant lots um, out there, that, that we are not underestimating the value of the lots which would confer a favor on those folks and then put more of the burden on people who own homes. So we're trying to estimate each of those components as more accurately as we can. And the value of property has generally gone up in Chicago and that's brought up the value of land too. Okay, uh, something from Ann. 
Anne lives in uh, Lakeview East, a two bedroom condo, vintage building, Lakeshore Drive. Uh, the reassessment, our reassessment, uh, put the value at 460K. A uh, year ago, she says the realtor's assessment was 450K, so not that far off. Um, however, the assessments have consistently gone down. Currently, three examples um, are Zillow, 379, Realtor.com, 373, Redfin, 397. So it kind of looks like kind of all across the board from different sources that she's looking at. Um, so uh, I guess probably the question is, you know, the confidence level and, and our value being right, you know, compared to, to all these other numbers. And it's kind of the challenge of, of mass appraisal and assessments overall. Well, sure. The, the interesting thing is that us at the assessor's office, Zillow, all these other folks that have... Uh, uh, computer models, they're kind of looking at the same information. They're looking at the information that we have about um, your condo building. Um, and then we're looking at transactions for condos like it inside your building, as well as condos in your neighborhood. And we're all looking at that information and then coming up with an estimate of where the market is, just like you would. If you're out there trying to sell your home, or if you're out there trying to buy a condo, you kind of do the same process. You look at what are other comparable condos selling for in the building or what do they sell for and what are other ones nearby selling for and there's your market. Um, and we try to estimate that value now. If we're getting it within $10,000 on, on a $450,000 home, we feel, we feel good about that. Of course, you, you know, uh, you have a right to appeal if you feel like um, uh, we still are overestimating the value of your house. You might not make that much of a difference in your tax bill, that $10,000 difference, but you have a right to appeal that. Now, if you live in a condo, you need to, we, we have to, by quirk of state law, estimate the value of the whole condo building rather than individual units. So we estimate the value of the whole building and we don't have much information about the building. We have information about the footage of the year it was built. And then we have information about the percentage ownership that each unit has in the building. And that's literally what our model works off of. So your condo association will generally appeal on behalf of the whole building. Why? Because we're assessing the value of the whole building. So it makes the most sense for your condo association to appeal on the value of the whole building. Um, so if, if you are leading your condo association, we can help you with that. Um, you do not have to hire a lawyer for that process. Uh, it's just about data. You can bring it to us and save uh, your money for that. Appealing is always free, but you know a lot of condo associations, because you're appealing on behalf of a bigger group of people, sometimes they dedicate more resources to that. So, um, but in any event, that's how it works. Um, and um, I think if you live in a condo unit, see if the value of your building was estimated correctly. If you're seeing an estimated value of your condo that is way off, that's a good basis for um, an appeal. And um, it can happen. We try to walk humbly because we don't have information about the many of the in, what's going on inside each of the units. And a lot of the units can be different. Say a penthouse unit sold within your condo our model might think that all the units inside your condo were valued like the penthouse. So there can be lots of things that can lead us astray in, um, in the appeals process. Um, that's, what, uh, that's why the appeals process is there to address situations where our model might've gotten off the mark for some reason. And thank, thanks, Ann, uh, for that question. You've done some great research. We always say in our outreach uh, that uh, our industry standard is about 10%, plus or minus the market in our, uh, in our assessments. So um, we try to try to be within that range. Um, Mark, no, Val, uh, does a vacancy policy include private homes as well, like a two flat? So we talked about vacancy as it relates to commercial properties. Uh, is vacancy a factor in residential properties as well? There, there is, but the vacancy policy for residential is different. Um, it usually has to do with is the home uninhabitable? Um, one of my high school classmates, uh, who's a fireman who didn't know anything about the appeals process, there was a guy who crashed a car into his house and it knocked down a wall of the house and he could not live in it. 
Um, typically, that's kind of what the vacancy policy for uh, residential is, where um, it's uninhabitable. Um, and we have a whole process for that. The change in our policy is not really changed on the residential side. We want to make sure that um, the home is truly uninhabitable and, um, um, and, and is, uh, you know, appropriately reflecting the value of the home after it was uninhabitable. Um, but uh, on the commercial side, that's where we made the big change. Our residential policy has not changed as much. We're just trying to make sure that it's enforced properly. Okay, uh, quite a few questions. I might try to start to double up uh, some of these, a pretty engaged bunch. Um, Mark, can you, Mark's asked, can you please explain the COVID adjustment year? Uh, is that only for one year? Was that just for like 2020 or does that continue? How are we thinking about COVID? Sure, so the assessment that we're doing in Chicago this year, it reflects the value of real estate in Chicago as of January 1st. Um, and so that includes the effect of COVID um, as it properly should. It also reflects the strong housing market that, that happened in Chicago in the second half of 2020. Um, you're thinking of last year, when we did our reassessments um, in the South suburbs, we also made adjustments to values in the city of Chicago where it was appropriate. Um, we, saw, we had indications of the massive impact of COVID on different kinds of real estate. And we had some studies that had shown some of those properties were uh, maybe overvalued or valued right around in line before COVID hit. So after the effect of COVID, we could, there was an argument for reducing their valuation um, because COVID really affected the value of some properties a lot, hotels, small commercial properties, um, theaters, performance spaces. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were taking into account uh, the effects of, of COVID as best as we could in a limited amount of time. Uh, we had to do that as of the end of April, 2020. So there are a lot, every time you do an assessment, it's as of a certain point in time, and it becomes out of date as soon as you've done it. You know, the markets change, life changes, things happen. And so what we saw in the second half of 2020 is a strong housing market. And so our assessments in Chicago this year reflect what happened, um, you know, everything that happened up to January 1st, uh, 2021. Yep. Okay. Um, so our next question is from, uh, let's see, Lucy, Lucy again. Um, how can a homeowner use a recent sale as evidence that their own home is over-assessed? What specific data needs to be included in the appeal? Can you use Zillow? Is that enough? Um, again, this question may have come in before some of Angelina's presentation, um, but I think the core question is, is, do we use recent sales? Can a person use a sale as an example? Um, Absolutely, yes. So if you're doing an appeal, um, there's an area in your appeal to provide evidence and commentary and narrative. Um, and certainly if a sale took place after um, uh, January 1st or even before uh, January 1st, a recent sale of that home that we're reassessing is a really good piece of evidence. Um, now it's not necessarily just positive because we're assessing lots of different homes in the same way. And we look at a lot of the sales of homes like that to come up with a valuation. So if there are, if you're living in a bungalow and your bungalow sold for $100,000, but there are a bunch of other bungalows like yours that sold for $90,000, um, we might say, okay, there was this one bungalow that sold at 100, but there are a whole bunch that sold at 90. We're gonna assess it at 90 because that's where the weight of the evidence shows us the same bungalows, same kinds of bungalows need to be assessed in the same way uh, to be fair to everyone. We don't want to um, move and assess value to a recent sale number for a home, but then identical homes that didn't sell recently are assessed differently. We don't want to do that. We want to assess them in the same way. So that's why a, a, a recent sale is a really good piece of evidence um, and, but it's not necessarily just positive, but it's a really good piece of evidence, probably one of the best pieces of evidence to bring up in an appeal. And then for homes like yours, that's also a good piece of evidence. So if you, you have a bungalow and there are other bungalows on your block that sold for 
uh, very different prices that can be but can also be good evidence uh, to mention in an appeal. The thing you have to remember is that we we need to assess like homes in a, in like ways and sometimes those like homes sell for slightly different prices but we try to come up with one estimate of value for all of them in the same way. But yes, that's really good evidence to bring an appeal. Remember that sales are probably a higher order of evidence than something from Zillow. Zillow is an opinion. It's not always right. It's just like our assessment is an opinion. We're not always right. Um, but sales are, that's kind of the coin of the realm in terms of like some of the best evidence to look at because these are arms length transactions most of the time that can help us, you know, that's, that's the raw material for figuring out what homes are worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we have a, another question um, <clears throat> about the senior exemption. My wife uh, who will be 65 this year and is listed as the owner, um, can we get that exemption for this year? Do you want to answer that, Kelwin? Yeah, I would say that is um, that would be next year. So if you um, turn, so currently um, the, the exemption, you qualify for the exemption if you turn 65 in 2020. Um, so it's kind of always the, the next year. So um, your wife would apply uh, for, uh, for, next, for the exemption next year, which as Angelina said, is coming up uh, in a matter of months. So, uh, but she would not qualify this year, not the year you turn 65, but the, but the next year. Uh, so that's a good, good rule of thumb. Um, but once she, she does apply, she never has to reapply again. So that's the, the good news. Our administration uh, was able to pass some legislation uh, whereby, you know, you don't have to, to qualify again and again that you're not getting any younger. Uh, so, um, you know, in the past, you know, recent past, just a couple few years ago, uh, people had to come to our office and you know, verify their age year after year. Um, so that's one, uh, one advantage of auto renewal of the senior exemption and uh, many other exemptions uh, during, uh, during this pandemic. Um, and if so you ever have questions about whether you qualify for an exemption, go to our website at cookcountyassessor.com, go to the section on exemptions, and I'll lay out all the different eligibility and how you can apply for it. You can apply for it online. You don't have to use paper anymore. It's real easy. It just takes a couple minutes. Um, you might have to provide um, uh, some information, but um, it is very easy, and we invite you to do it because that makes everything safer, and we're trying to make things easier for you so that you don't have to recertify every year that you're still over 65. Um, and uh, that's one of the things that we really worked hard to make sure that we make things easier for you. Yep. And I think we sort of answered this next one as well. Michael, can someone explain uh, the current policy of what properties and for what reasons might be eligible for a certificate of error refund uh, appeals? Um, so as Angelina mentioned, Certificates of error, you qualify if there is any exemptions that you qualify for that you might have missed. So, you know, the previous person's, you know, wife, if she were you know, 68 and had never applied for the homeowner's exemption, could go back three years uh, and, and recoup uh, that, uh, that savings. And that would actually be returned to her in the form of a refund from the treasurer's office. Uh, the same with all the exemptions. So if there was ever, and, and again, back to uh, that bill, that second installment tax bill that Angelina showed, um, there's a section for exemptions. If something in there says zero, uh, and there should be an actual dollar amount. Um, so that's a red flag. So certainly you know, reach out to us as well as you can go on the property tax portal at any time um, and, uh, and see if, if you've got all the exemptions you qualify for. But, but right on our site, uh, you can go back you know, three years and uh, apply for, for those uh, certificates of um, so, uh, next question, anonymous attendee, please at some point talk about the home improvement exemption, the home improvement exemption. So that's one, um, uh, that, you know, it, it's, uh, you, you qualify for it. A lot of people feel like are afraid to not do improvements on their home because they feel like their taxes are going to go up. So this exemption sort of protects against that. Uh, up to $75,000 of improvements on your home. Uh, you don't qualify for it, it's on our website. Um, you don't you qualify for it rather, but you don't apply for it. Uh, it automatically applies to you uh, once you do those improvements and you file for a permit. So uh, you would actually hear from us uh, regarding that exemption, uh, but it's up to $75,000 uh, 
um, and you you won't see any increase in your property taxes uh, for certain for certain improvements on your home. Uh, I'll drop a link in the chat uh, for for folks uh, to learn more uh, about what improvements qualify under that exemption. Um, but again, it's not something that you apply for through our office. Just go ahead and make those improvements. Look on our website beforehand before you get the work done, um, and you know you can you know, be assured that your taxes won't won't increase uh, from making minor improvements on your um, Katie, I have to say the information about applying for an appeal is a day late, dollar short. However, I have a couple of questions. My assessment, um, and again, we're not too late on appeals because you have until the 23rd. So um, you do have time still. Uh, my assessment described the property at large and not my individual unit within the condo. Do I look up buildings with similar characteristics? Does the other exemptions have a past filing such as senior? Um, so a few different questions here. Um, but let's see, my assessment describes the property at large and not my individual unit. So as the assessor said, I mean, oftentimes it sounds like you're in a condo. Um, often condo associations apply as a building. Uh, if you're a condo, you're a percentage of that building. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you want to go you know, deeper into this, um, you know, you, many condo associations you know, do uh, apply as the entire building. So I would encourage you to talk to the association. Uh, you can apply as individual unit, um, but, you know, to, to avoid um, you know, some of the, the confusion, a lot of condo associations do apply um, together. Um, so do the other exemptions have a past filing such as senior? Not exactly sure uh, about the question, but you know, feel free to, to follow up and, and reach out to us or reach out to, to me and I can pass on my information. Patrick, uh, for my single family draft appeal, I have five comparison properties. They're all the same property classification, but slightly older than mine. Uh, does property age affect the building AV uh, or is it all the same if under the same property classification? Um, I'm going to pass that one to, to the assessor. How do we look at uh, age of building uh, in an appeal? Um, well, first of all, in our original model, we definitely look at age of building. Um, you know, when our data scientists are seeing what are the things that most impact someone's, the value of someone's home, you know, the most important ones are where it is and the square footage, uh, but uh, and the size of the lot. But coming close after that is the age and type of construction of your home. Um, and, uh, you know, one that's recent construction, uh, we try to look at those very differently from something that is 100 years old, um, especially if it's, say, a, uh, an apartment building. Because um, some of those old apartment buildings, um, they are just different markets from newer apartment buildings. Sometimes they don't have AC. Sometimes there's no elevator. It's a walk-up. Um, so we, we really try to look at um, age as a very important thing to take into account. Usually we're not going to compare your home um, in an appeal with a home that is very different in age or type of construction. We're going to look at homes nearby of relatively similar size, of relatively uh, same date of construction, um, in type of construction. And those will be the things that we look at most closely when we do an appeal to see if you're, you're being treated fairly. Um, and uh, um, in an appeal, you don't typically have to mention that. Um, if we got the year of your construction wrong, that could be a good reason to correct us on that. Um, when you do an appeal, you can correct us on the characteristics um, so that we're using the right characteristics in valuing your home. You can imagine um, how frustrating it would be if, you know, we're, you keep on having to appeal with us every three years because we don't have the basic characteristics right. Uh, we've upgraded our IT system so that we should be able to keep track of uh, when you, much better uh, when we have incorrect characteristics. If you correct us on that, um, you shouldn't need to do it again. Um, and so, um, but that year of construction is very important. Okay, I'm gonna combine Mark and Michael Madero's question together because they're very similar about uh, condo appeal filings. Uh, please explain the differences in how you appeal when the entire building is joined together in an appeal. That was Mark and then Michael asked, 
a height if there is one condo in a multi-unit building, 19 units, that seems out of proportion to the rest of the units, in my case, subterranean duplex with unusable space, can that individual homeowner appeal or does it still have to be the whole building? So um, some you know, confusion, you know, people needing clarity on how do you go about appealing through your building? the entire building i mean we know this is the condo association but you know what if you want to appeal on your own or what if you know you just... so uh, again under the state's law our assessment is based on the value of your building and um and then your share of that value is under the articles of, of association your percentage ownership of the building um, and that's where our assessed value comes from so if you're doing an appeal and we're assessing the value of the building you want to appeal as part of a group on the value of the building. Um, uh, you, it's going to um, be much more impactful to do it that way than if you um, do it on your own. Um, so that's why we do that. And we don't necessarily, we wouldn't necessarily argue for this law because we know a lot of the condo units are really different. Some of them have been maintained really well. Others might have real issues that we can't see. We really don't have much information about what's going on inside the units. But the other thing that the questioner had is, if it seems out of whack, make sure that your percentage ownership fairly reflects the percentage you know, of the value in the building. That can be hard to do, but a lot of times we, we see, or not a lot of times, sometimes we see percentage ownerships that might be askew, that really don't reflect the different um, prices that prevail in the market. For example, if you have a 10-story condo and each condo is one floor, and if you're splitting up the value of the building 10% each, that might not necessarily be a fair allocation of value because the person at the penthouse might have a building that's actually worth more than 10% of the value of the building and the other units are subsidizing that one. So this is something you need to work out with your, um, with your condo association, but make sure that the percentage allocation of value is correct. Sometimes with parking spots or other things, things can go um, awry in our model, bring it to our attention if something seems really askew um, and we'll try to correct it. Okay, this is like the last question uh, from Michael Borbeck. Um, there are many kinds of affordable housing home, on, home ownership in the ward, including those that might otherwise appear as market rate housing. Are you open to receiving a list of these appealing properties uh, so they can be brought to the attention of your trained affordable housing division? I think the answer is yes and, and yes. Yes. Well, 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 good question, Michael. First of all, there are, there, you're right that there are different kinds of flavors of affordable housing. So the kind of affordable housing that is restricted by deed, so the change of ownership is restricted by deed, that there's a deed restriction where the owner is undertaking to limit rents to income levels rather than market levels. Those programs, we should have the data on them. It is sometimes will happen that we don't get the data on those buildings. They do need to be treated differently. So. Um, bring those up to our attention. If they've not already been treated so, you can see on our webpage um, in the community valuation report how we value uh, affordable housing differently in Lakeview Township from other kinds of housing. But you're also right, Michael, that there are some kinds of um, uh, rental housing that might not be limited by deed but is naturally occurring affordable housing. Um, and the key there is making sure that we have good data on those buildings so that they may be naturally occurring affordable housing because the, the building is old, um, that it has, um, you know, might, it might be an old courtyard building over a hundred years old that is of a different standard of operating cost and rent from more recent market rate um, housing. In those kinds of buildings, we also want to treat differently because they sometimes have higher costs, the rents are lower for one reason or another, um, and um, there might be other issues there too that affect its value. So we want to know about that. You would 
bring that to our attention through filling out the RPI form before we send out the assessment um, reassessment notice. But if, um, if you didn't fill it out and you want to appeal it to bring to our attention the other attributes of the housing that make it affordable, you can do that when you file your appeal and you will fill out the RPI form as part of your appeal if it's uh, more than six units. Um, and we definitely will take that into account when we consider the appeal. And I apologize, I missed one from Kevin. Uh, similar, uh, Kevin's property is flooded in 2017 and uh, uninhabitable for six months. Um, bringing that to our attention, is that a home improvement exception? Um, I don't that know that's might the be the kind of thing it, that but would it's probably something be... to put into appeal, right? You yeah. Know, so that might be know. the kind of thing that could be treated as uh, as vacancy or uninhabitable. Um, so uh, Kelwin, uh, make sure that he has the information that we can uh, we can get it mm -hmm. to. Him. We can show him the part of the website where he can uh, file okay. an appeal. Okay. All right. I'm going to put my information in the chat. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and wrap here uh, and do some, some closing remarks, but feel free to reach out to me um, individually. Uh, some people had questions about their individual properties and units, uh, and we can do some, uh, do some digging on that. Um, but um, a little bit over, uh, you know, we enjoyed digging into questions, appreciate all the engagement uh, here tonight. Um, you know, thanks to, to everyone who's, who's joined on this call. Um, use some time for the alderman to, to give some closing remarks and, and the assessor as well. So maybe alderman Kappelman. I'm um, sure uh, this was very informative and I, I told you so about Fritz. This, this guy really, really, uh, he loves data and, he, and he's driven by data and we need him to be driven by data. So um, I'm hoping all your questions have been answered. If not, uh, contact my office. I know Fritz's office, they wanna hear from you as well. Um, but uh, thank you so much for being a part of this tonight. Thank you, Alderman. And thank you everyone for sticking with us. We know there are lots of places you can be. So make sure you get Kelwin's information off the site. You can go to cookcountyassessor.com to get any other information you need. You can send us an email, give us a call, uh, reach out to us on social media. We're here to serve you. We know the deadline's coming up. So um, we're, and if anyone needs to do an appeal, don't be intimidated if you think you have to do lots of research or find lots of comps. You don't need to do it. It just takes a couple minutes. You can do it from your phone. Don't, please don't let that be a barrier um, in filing an appeal. We look at it in six or seven different ways for you. Um, and so thank you, Alderman. Really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for being here tonight. Happy holidays and stay safe out there. Happy holidays.